States takes pleasure in presenting the Defense Distinguished Service Medal to Matthew P. Caulfield. Brigadier General Matthew P. Caulfield, United States Marine Corps, distinguished himself by exceptional service as Deputy Director, White House Military Office from May 1983 to April 1986. General Caulfield displayed superb leadership and managerial acumen as he supervised the operations of the White House Military Office for day-to-day -day and contingency support of the President. His foresight and superior intellect resulted in unprecedented enhancements in the presidential command and control of the armed forces and national emergencies. Notable among his many innovations in this demanding position was the development and establishment of a well-planned and coordinated contingency plan for the presidency steering organization. Under his enthusiastic direction, both short and long-range enhancements to White House emergency planning have resulted in operational plans that have directly strengthened the national security of the United States. His sense of loyalty to the President and to the nation and his indefatigable commitment to meet the needs of the Commander-in-Chief served as an inspiration to all those who served with him. He leads by example and with the highest integrity, resulting in an unparalleled record of effective military support to the President. The distinctive accomplishments of the Brigadier General Caulfield reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Marine Corps, and the Department of Defense. Sometimes I think that going out there to combat troops, though, is further away from combat than being right. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a different kind of combat yeah. here. Yeah. We have so, a little souvenir. Mm -hmm. Both of you, sir, sure you won't forget us. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. You. The citation of the others that go with that. Thank you, sir. How was the pitching, though? Well, oh, I had to throw two. I heard you overthrew. <laughs> well, right. the, the press. <laughs> The press pressed in so around us, they didn't leave an alley wider than this for the catcher <laughs> than myself. And then they were right behind him and over his shoulder and everything. So finally he, I was getting ready to throw, and he thought and put his glove way up like, or the mid yes, way up right. like that. And with that little target, so I aimed at that and missed it. Well, he didn't have any more flexibility <laughs> to go further. So he went and got the ball and brought it back to it to me, and then he's kept his mid in here, and I threw a strike. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, thank you again. Well, well thank you. Thank you, President Reagan. Have a good day, Bye. sir. President, the ambassador of the Soviet yes. Union. Well, well, it's a real pleasure to meet you again. Well, and thank you very much for those gifts. Oh, it's, it's just a pleasure oh, for my wife and to you on a personal basis. Well, uh, I think we should just remember for well, the years we spent together. Thank you so, very and much. And we really do appreciate right. it. Deputy Foreign Minister Bruce Mettner. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Well, nice to see you again. What's the cane for? Well, it's, uh, it's a, a rearmament. No. Rearmament? <laughs> No, honestly. Mr. Ambassador, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Once again, yes, we have seen it. Okay, thank you. Well, you sit in the honorable seat now. Yes, I don't know. Your election, though. 
Secretary of the Central Committee. Well, thank you very much. It happens that I was quite thankful for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just know we're eager to move forward on the, as we agreed in Geneva. And I think we've made some progress in some of the bilateral talks already and the people-to-people -people exchanges are very important. I know that our Mr. Wick came home uh, quite encouraged by his meetings there. But uh, I have to say at the same time, we are disappointed with regard to the lack of progress in, uh, that we've made, overall lack of progress in some of the major things that we had talked about. So, uh, Since December, summit preparations have been undertaken by a summit White House working group chaired by Dennis Thomas and Dr. Lefeer. The working group has made considerable progress in laying the groundwork for a successful summit. At the present date, your Far Eastern trip, which is the longest trip outside the United States during your presidency, has been completely advanced by Bill Hinkle's very competent team. The trip will have two major parts, a visit to Bali in Indonesia for a meeting with ASEAN officials, and then, of course, going on to Tokyo to the summit. Our focus today will be on the Tokyo summit, but the ASEAN trip, as it relates to political issues and our public and policy efforts, will also be considered today. There are three areas which we want to discuss. First, the status of the preparatory process and the economic agenda. Alan Wallace who is and has been for the previous three summits. Your personal representative will speak on this issue. 
Second, as the summit provides an opportunity for numerous bilateral meetings between the heads and working dinners on political issues, we will briefly discuss the political context of the summit and where we stand on a summit political statement. These issues will be more fully dealt with at an NSC meeting scheduled for the 22nd of April before we leave. Secretary Schultz, or in his absence, uh, Roz Ridgway, uh, is going to address that. Third, and combining the other two issues, the economic and the political aspects, as usual, we have a public diplomacy effort, once again headed by the indomitable Jim Rensher. <laughs> and we welcome Jim uh, to his assignment for this. Jim will describe the themes for your journey across the Pacific and the program and plan for delivering your message over the next few weeks heading into the summit. Uh, Don, you want to add anything? <laughs> All right, then. Uh, first, let me ask Alan Wallace to describe the summit prep preparation process and the likely profile of economic 